everyone, I'm Ari here with Rachel and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. This week we're on episode 235 and we're asking, can influencers help market your book? Before we start, if you enjoy our show, please consider checking out our copy page. You can follow the page for free as we have plenty of freebies for everyone. Or if you're feeling generous, you can become a Merry Writer yourself for $2 a month. You'll help to keep the show going and you'll also get access to bonus episodes and exclusive shop items. We've got quite a lot in there right now. If that's not your style, but you still enjoy the podcast, then please subscribe wherever you're listening if you haven't already. Okay, so we're talking influencers. First of all, disclaimer, I hate the word influencer. I'm not a big fan of influencers. It might be because I'm a crutch to your woman, but I am leaning into that right now. However, I appreciate that there are people who can find them useful, but if we're talking about marketing, it's business. So you need to think about it like a business. If you want to use influence for your marketing your book, I would personally recommend that that you don't make that a large part of your marketing. You should have multiple arms of marketing going on. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and don't just go, oh, wow, this influencer, perfect. There's a few things you need to think about when you are going to use an influencer for marketing your book. First of all, it's audience. Just because someone has big numbers, big follower numbers, and are really popular, doesn't mean that their audience is your audience. That seems to be a big issue that people have. They see that, oh, wow, this person has a million followers. I like watching them. It's like, okay, but are the followers people who would like your book? Otherwise, you are throwing money away on the wrong people. That's why if you buy ads for certain platforms, you you specify things. You specify age. You specify location. You specify interests because you should know who your target audience is. You should know your ideal reader. We have covered these topics. There will be links somewhere if I remember. So don't just look at the big number. You need to think about their audience and whether it's your audience. The next one is engagement. Because this one, I am always so shocked about how many how many times I see an influencer when their pictures come up, if you ever go on one of them, and like they'll be they'll be hocking someone's item and they'll be holding it up, whether it's a cosmetic item or a dog lead or a book or anything. And again, you've got thousands of like likes. Oh wow. No comments, no saves, just likes. And I'm sorry to say, you can buy likes. You can have bots, you can have accounts. Likes aren't that great. Comments are what's important. And some of them, I've even seen some of these people with these millions of followers, thousands and thousands of followers, and they don't even have likes. (laughs) They're not even paying for bots. So stop looking at the big number at the top and start looking at engagement. Are people engaging? And is it real engagement? Or is it that promote here? Oh my gosh, try this course or whatever rubbish that you get like botted up on um on comments we've all had them don't you you put something on it does pretty well and then you get dm me to promote this or oh wow blah 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 some horrible spammy thing i have seen influence who've not deleted those so it makes them look like they've had loads of messages and then you go in it's like that's just tribe what is this they're not real comments engagement is important that's what helps with conversion that's what gets pushed more by the algorithm so yeah don't just go, yeah, this person's great. No. Are people engaging? Are people interested in that person and what they're selling? You mentioned that you can buy likes. You can also buy followers. So if you see somebody and they have a million followers, but then you scroll through their feed and you see that each photo and video only has like, I don't know, like a hundred likes, but then like two comments or no comments. That's kind of how the oh man what's the word conversion that's how conversion works i remember with email newsletters and this was a long time ago so i'm sure the conversion rates are very different now so don't take my word for this but when i was doing research on email newsletters like a few years ago it said that if you have a two percent conversion rate that was considered good so if i had a hundred email subscribers and What's 2% of 100? Is that just two? I don't know that math. I don't know that math. I don't know. And like two people opened it. That's considered good or something like that. Like 2% of those 100 subscribers is considered good. And I'm like, that's lousy. Like that's not even double digits. That's horrible. 
but apparently that's how it works. That's how social media works. So if you see that, like the engagement, I, I don't know, people just see the high numbers as Ari said, and then they think it's a good thing. And that's, it's not, it's not always a good thing. But something else, when it comes to engagement, you need to consider the type of social media you're on as well. I can really only talk about Instagram because that's the only social media platform that I am currently on. But I mean, Instagram, it's mostly photos and stuff, but reels have become a massive thing now. So you may notice that somebody's posts get very little engagement, but their reels do really well. Or vice versa, or maybe neither of them do well. And it kind of, it just depends because a lot of people on Instagram, they scroll through Instagram and they just double tap and then they keep going. Nobody reads the caption. That's, that's a given. I, you're, you gotta be lying to me if you tell me that you actually read Instagram captions. <laughs> I don't think anybody really does. It's all in the pictures, but then you have other platforms like Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. See, I can't speak. I deleted my account a while ago. But I mean, it's all status updates. So that's more conversation than just liking. But even then, if they don't have many commenters and stuff, it's just, it's a balancing act, pretty much. I'm kind of rambling and I apologize, but it's it's a balancing act. If you're trying to find somebody to help boost your book through Instagram or Twitter or whatever, like, don't just look at their followers if like, or at least don't look at the number. Actually look at who their followers are and figure out the audience, as Ari mentioned beforehand. I'll shut up. Actually, you made a good point. Yes, you can buy followers. And, uh, sad that people do. You can also create multiple accounts. There have been cases of people, I'm not going to name names, if you can find them on YouTube, because they've been called out, where you go on and they've been like loads of comments on every post and it's the same four people. And each one of those four people follows each other and they've dug deep. You know, you get these internet sleuths and it's all the same person. You know, if you've ever watched Catfish, you'll know that that's a thing where they'll create a fake Facebook account or Instagram and then they'll create all the fake friends to go around it to convince the victim or the target. Hey, this person's really good. And it's all one person. Not that we assume that everyone's doing that, but a lot of people do that because people are in this game, this influencer game for money. I don't care what anyone says. Most people who are into influencing are doing it for the money or for the free stuff. And as Rachel said, reels, reels on Instagram videos are bigger things. You know what really, what one of my pet peeves is, and I'm probably going to piss off a lot of people, follow trains. If I see a follow train, I get the hell out of there because it's one of those things where they're boosting up their followers. But again, the engagement just isn't there with the likes and the comments. And the only people that are liking and commenting on that person's uh, photos are the people that join the follow train. It's all the hosts of the follow train. And then you have people who will follow certain people just to unfollow them. They follow and then they wait for the person to follow them back and then they unfollow. So it makes it look like they have more followers than, yeah, it's just social, social media is so rough. I think I had more to say about that, but I've lost it. Sorry. I'm like rambling. I'm screwing up your episode. You can't screw it up. I do that myself. No, you're right though. It is. It's, you get, I hate, I hate follow trains, especially because there seem to be like millions of them. And it's like, here's follow these 20 or more hosts. It's like, no, I have got to the point now where I've gone in and I've deleted people I follow because I've checked and some of them haven't responded since like, you know, they've not been online since 2018. Some of them have changed what they, they follow. And it's like, that's just garbage. That's nothing I'm not interested in. And I never follow back if someone follows me without checking out everything first, because just because you follow me doesn't mean I'm going to follow you. But anyway, I digress. Back to what Rachel was saying, different types of posts. If you've got some influencer and they're putting reels up that are doing really well, and then they're like marketing ones, like if they're advertising other people's books and they're all pictures and not reels, and they're getting little engagement, that shows you what they think about your work that sort of marketing part they're not giving the same boost so what are their posts and photos what are they doing also where is the product because we've seen this before where you look at some some uh picture or video and 
the person is front and center and the item they're supposedly pushing is like hanging at their side or sitting on the on the table next to them and you can barely see it and i've seen people go like oh wow that was my book and it's like where can't even read the title that's not marketing <laughs> seriously and that's this is where i go and i say this is why you need to be aware of the women in swimwear influences if they're marketing your book or anybody else's product unless it's swimwear or sun cream or something if they're in their swimwear on a beach and they are the main focus i guarantee a lot of the people liking and commenting are more interested in her than what she's you know selling regarding your book or something so yeah think about how that person is marketing are they talking about your book are they showing it full center are they just showing the book are they putting the information in the pictures or the reel, or I, as Rachel said, is it all in the in the caption that nobody reads? I only read captions of, of people I actually follow that I like, like my close friends or other writers. I will often go into those, but not always. I have to admit, I am bad. I, I You know, that's the whole point of scrolling. You don't really think about it. You just scroll, scroll, scroll. So things like that. So yeah, how are they, how are they actually doing the pictures and the videos? Or is your product front and center? If it's not, leave it seriously leave it rachel mentioned conversion that's true especially if you are selling things if you look at a 30-day window two percent conversion or above is really good anything under that it's not bad but yeah two percent is where you want to be that is a good conversion rate you should be able to ask that influencer what their views likes and sale conversion rate are you should be able to ask them qu uh, queries about their engagement level and their audience and they should be able to give you that information you usually have to either supply a free book. Some of them will actually charge you to do the marketing. And I'm not saying that's wrong because in the end, it's marketing. It's a business. They're doing a business for you. But in that case, you need to know what your return on investment is. How much are you giving them compared to how much traffic they will be bringing to your book and how much of that traffic will convert to coming to your website, coming to your Instagram. And then from there, how much will the, of that will then move to sales? You can always ask other authors. You can reach out to other authors who may have used that influencer and say, how did it go for you? Hopefully they'd tell you the truth. You know, never know, but hopefully they would. That's actually a really good point though. I never really thought about the return on investment because obviously if you have somebody marketing your book for you on their Instagram page, their followers, whatever engagement they do get, if they do have a lot of engagement, their followers very well might write a comment and say, oh, wow, this book sounds really good. I'll have to check it out. And then they keep scrolling on Instagram and it goes out of their mind. And I think that also kind of ties into the conversion rate. You probably will get like a small percentage of people that will actually open up their web browser on their phone and look you up on Amazon and look at your book and, you know, figure it out. And then a small percentage from that might actually buy it. So that's obviously something you have to think about. You may have 50 comments on that post saying, wow, this sounds interesting, but then you might only get like two sales. And one of those sales might have found you on their own from your website or something like that. You really don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. So yeah, I never, I never thought about that. That's a really good, that's a good point. No, it is. It, it's weird because it's all business and you have to think of it through the eyes of a business person. It's not just, wow, this famous person, or not even famous, bloody hell, this popular person. <laughs> so crotchety this popular person i can send my stuff and they'll read you know they might not even read it they might just hold it up and everything and that's fine but it's like is that going to actually do you any good would it have been better to pay for an ad on amazon would it be better to pay for some ads on facebook would it be better to pay for ads on bookbub there are so many other things that depend on how much you have to pay for that or if you have to send them a physical copy because most of them want a physical copy and depending on where they are in the world you've got shipping on top of that just for a, a single image is it worth it it might seem like it but is it actually worth it? Could that money have been spent in a better place to really advertise? The ones I've seen that did quite well were where the influencer actually put it on a story and had that like link so that, you know, like if you, if you scroll up, it goes to the link of the page of whatever it is. And they would put the buy link or the website link on that story. Whereas I've noticed you don't really have that on the actual regular Instagram, they might put a mess, you know, they might say, oh, follow this person in the caption. But as Rachel said, not everyone reads the caption. And if they're not talking about the book, if they haven't read it, then they're just holding it up. So you get, might get people going, 
well, did you read it? No, I haven't read it. Oh, well, if you haven't read it, I'm not interested because they all want to follow whatever this person is doing because, oh my God, they're influencers. <laughs> oh, I'm being so mean. What a weird world we live in though. I mean, because you're not, you're not wrong. But it it is true because about what you said about the physical copies, because I used to be a freelance book publicist to indie authors and especially for bookstagrammers, they would want that physical copy so they could take a pretty picture with it. And I actually had, I reached out to somebody and because we were only giving digital copies at the time, they said no. Like they were like, oh, it sounds interesting and I would love to do it, but you know, let me know if you get a print. And they were like, no, I'm not going to do this just because you're getting giving me a digital like that was their deal breaker getting a digital copy over a physical copy uh which i found interesting i mean to each their own but i did find that interesting but the other thing is when you're working with people with these people you gotta vet them and check out their work first like their social media their website etc cetera, etc cetera, and make sure that they'll follow through on marketing your book and put the effort in and make sure that they're just not doing it to get free books or whatever, because there are some people out there who will do that. They will just see the free book and they'll take it and they'll run. And I run into that issue before, too, when I was doing book publicity. I've had people where they accepted the book and then just completely ghosted. And I'm like, well, did you not like it? Did you not finish it? Like, could you at least tell me? And they were just poof gone it's annoying but and i mean it sucks but like there are people out there there are plenty of people out there who genuinely want to read your book and help you boost it and market it and things like that but yeah you got to make sure like what exactly they will do to market your book are you asking them for an instagram photo or are they going to post it on their photo one day and then post it as a reel another day are they going to share that on their stories so on and like share the the appropriate hashtags and so on and so forth that's a really good point though like you know what what effort are they going to put in it's, it definitely shouldn't be a case of here's my book market it for me because you could literally get a two second reel of like here's the book and then 18 more things get put, posted the same day from that person and it just gets lost, especially in, in like Instagram. I mean, it's one of the reasons why stories are quite good because they last 24 hours. Yes, they only last 24 hours, but they're up there at the top and people are do seem to be drawn more to stories than than the feed all the time. So yeah, it's, it's a weird one, especially because the algorithm doesn't send it like chronologically. And obviously, if you're if you're if the post that's got your book on doesn't get a lot of traction, Instagram doesn't send it to many people. So I am going to make a point. If someone reaches out to you, I would probably not go with them. And I get this all the time on my business on Etsy. I get messages through Etsy. I get messages through my DMs. Oh my gosh, we love your stuff. We would love to market for you. If you could send us twenty pieces, we'll take photos of ourselves wearing them. And it's like you know what? I'm good. I don't need to send you. And it's always the 20 most expensive pieces as well. You know, I've had people say, oh, I, I want it so I could put it on a video and unbox it for you. And it's like, and who the hell are you? No offense. I've gone and checked your website. You've got nobody following you. You know, it's like, oh, well, I'm just starting out. And I appreciate that. But that's not how you start out asking for free things. Create content. Be interesting on your own. If they're just reaching out to you because they want you to be an, you know, they want to be an ambassador for your bro your product and your brand and anything like this. No, I'm sorry. I will just outright say, I don't think that's a good idea. You are probably pissing your money away. Put it into an advert on Amazon. That is a better place to do it. And it sounds mean, but there are so many people who want free stuff. As Rachel said, people will do anything for free stuff. And for starting a business where they barely have to do anything, literally get other people's products and showcase them, and that becomes their whole business. No, I'm not into that. Yeah, that's a really good point too, because people will do that. I mean, if, if you're reaching out to, or somebody reaches out to you about wanting to like boost your book and stuff, and they're expecting you to just give it for free. And I know like with book marketing, like especially with reviews, like the free review copy is like a complimentary copy. And I know, you know, that's how it works. But with other like small businesses like Etsy and you're like hand making items and you're you're putting a lot of like time and effort and money into it. Not that I'm saying you don't when it comes to writing a book, but bear with me here. And they reach out and they're just like, hey, can you give me like a promo box? And no, unless you yourself have decided I'm going to put together a promo box and like you open it on your website and be like, there's only 10 available first come first serve that's different, but they shouldn't expect it to be 100% free 
for them. If that makes any sense. But I will say you can think outside the box when it comes to, I mean, obviously it's a good idea to like find influencers and like bookstagrammers that, you know, read and promote books that are within your genre because the people who follow them probably also read in that genre. So, I mean, there you go. You have your audience right there, but you can also think outside the box a little bit and reach out to people that, uh, I don't know how to explain it. So I'll just go ahead with my example. A lot of cozy mysteries, they have recipes at the back of the book. And I follow a couple of accounts on Instagram that share all these different coffee recipes. If you have, if you write a cozy mystery and you have coffee recipes in the back of the book, you can reach out to that person and say, hey, do you like reading? Do you like cozy mystery? Would you care to read this book? And if you enjoy it, maybe make one of the recipes and share that on your Instagram and make a video of you making the recipe. And that's like such a nice little crossover of marketing because you get coffee lovers and you also get book lovers. And maybe some of those coffee lovers also would enjoy a good cozy mystery. So there are different ways to do it. You don't need to just look at bookstagrammers and say, do they read in my genre? Oh yeah, they do. There are other ways you can go about it. You really gotta like, it, it's marketing. You gotta put effort into it. You gotta put some brain power into it. I love that. I think that's a really good way because if I was into coffee and had a re- someone offer me a book that I'd rest with in the back, I'd be like, oh yeah, I want that. That is great. And yeah, it's, it's like there are people out there. No one's saying all influencers are bad. I'm just saying most influencers are bad. <laughs> Sorry, no. Well, I am. But I think there are some people out there. I mean, Bookstagram and BookTok actually can be really, really good. However, you've also got to remember, they can be really, really bad. Sometimes they will take your book. And if you're, especially if you're asking for a, a, an honest review as well, they may do that review. And if they've got a large following, you're going to get like creamed in it. So just an FYI, you've got to be careful with that. But you could look through their feeds, look through their comments, look through other people who've used them. You know, look at the pictures and the videos. Is that, if you were saw those videos, would you be like, wow, I want to buy that book? Is that what you're going to expect? So it's just all about doing due diligence. Don't just see popular person, other people that have used them too. And wow, look at those follower numbers. That seems to be as well has been happening where people have just gone, oh, wow, that's brilliant. And it's like, okay, that's like the tip of the iceberg. Do some research. And if it turns out that they may not be great, put your money somewhere else or reach out to bloggers or podcasters. See if they will read your book. See if they will advertise your book. I mean, that's why we have what they call blog tours where you get like a several blog bloggers all at once and then they will literally put out your book they will um they will do reviews they will just talk about your book they will maybe answer questions and they put all of them out over different days there's different ways to market so yeah if you want to go through influencers absolutely fine just make sure you're looking at all the different possibilities and make sure you're getting that return on investment and if not put your money somewhere else because otherwise it's just not worth it you can see exactly what i feel about no, you're not wrong though. I I agree with you. It's a it's kind of one of those like sticky situations type of thing. You really got to be careful with it. As you said, we're not saying all influencers are bad. We're not saying that you shouldn't do it. You, you absolutely should do it. But you got to err on the side of caution. Yeah, find the right influencer. You know, it's like just because they're a popular person and they do like everything, it would be better to find someone who is just a book influencer. And I again, I've seen people who've like the influence they've done everything they've, they've they've marketed makeup and then they've marketed books and then they've marketed shoes and then they've marketed like vpn and i'm not saying that's bad but that's a big mixed bag but if you went and looked for a bookstagrammer and that bookstagrammer the all their photos were beautiful all their videos were beautiful the detail was great and, and, and the book was front and center you've got a better chance that they're being followed by other people who love books and love the visual and the aesthetic than someone who is literally pimping VPNs and money software and then Wellington boots and then printers and makeup and hair products and laser eye surgery. It's like, come on. You really just pulled all of that out of your ass. I love that. (laughs) I did, yes. I was looking around going, oh, printer, wellies, you know. I'm dragging this episode out a little longer. I apologize. But I thought of one more thing. Make connections. If you're going to reach out to influencers to help market your book, make a connection with them first. Don't just scope out their Instagram feed and their website and their other social media and then just DM them. Make connections. Follow them for a little while. Actually engage with their posts. 
so that when you do DM them, they will hopefully recognize your name. Maybe they've already looked at your pro profile to see what you're all about and what you write and this, that, and the other. And just don't, don't cold pitch people. I hate cold pitching. That's another unpopular opinion. I don't like cold pitching. But you too need to put in the effort and make connections with these people. You can't just, it's just similar to what Ari said earlier, they shouldn't reach out to you expecting free stuff, but you also can't expect to reach out to them and then just say, hey, could you do this? Do the, me a solid, do me a favor. So, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of marketing. You're supposed to, it's networking. That's the word I'm looking for, networking. Be smart about it. You just made me think of another point. Make sure you have a list of questions to ask. You know, we've talked about the engagement and the conversion and everything. You need to make sure you ask them, like, when will they be able to do it? Because if they're popular, if they get lots of authors sending them books, you might be way down the list. So if you've got a book launch coming out or you're like, you know, it's like the month or two after the book launch and you want to keep the momentum going, don't just reach out and be like, hey, can you do this? They might go, yeah, OK, and then put you to the back of the pile, which you should be if everyone else is ahead of you. And then you're like, wow, where are they? Why is it not come out? Because maybe you were booked in for like, you know, December, three years from now. And we say that as a podcast who records very far in advance and also we book up quite quickly. So we we're already booking, we've already booked up all of our guests for 2024 a couple of months ago. So you have to be aware that you can't just jump in and go, hi, can you do this one in like three days? It's like, no, find out what their time scale is. Just be aware of that. I concur. I'm going to let you wrap this up because we've probably dragged this on enough. Okay, let's turn it over to you guys. Have you ever worked with influencers before to market your book? How did it go? I'm just going to put a quick caveat in there. If they didn't go well, please don't be naming and shaming anything and saying really bad things at this time. If you want to do that privately, fine, but I don't want to get anyone coming after us because you put some names in the, in the comments. We don't want that. But yes, do share your answers in the comments so we can chat about it. Remember, we do release new episodes every Wednesday. Next week, we're discussing running a successful book tour with a special guest. To ensure you don't miss it, hit the subscribe button on your way out. As always, thanks for listening to the Mayor Right Podcast, and we'll see you next week. This podcast is brought to you by Belt It Pens. We love to colour code. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.